Today, I'm making a refreshing carbonated strawberry and vanilla mead. Let's get started. So the last time I made a strawberry and vanilla mead at this strength, it grew mold and I had to toss it. That was years ago. I'm not gonna let that happen again. I'm running back at this thing with a vengeance. So first of all, let's talk about strawberries and fermentation. Many people say that when you ferment on the seeds of the strawberries, you'll get a plasticky off taste and aroma. I believe this is true, partially true, because I've had it happen before, but I didn't really do anything to fix that for this brew. So I'm telling you right now, if you want to get rid of those seeds, you can always puree them, puree the strawberries, and then strain them through a fine mesh strainer. This will normally get rid of those seeds. And you won't have that problem. For this mead, I cut up about three pounds of fresh strawberries and put them into some water with pectic enzyme. I put that container into a refrigerator so that they would cold macerate. The pectic enzyme breaks down the fruit skins so they produce more juice. The cold macerating also helps with this and helps ensure that mold cannot grow because it's a colder environment. That sat about two days and then I pulled those out. I took this recipe on screen, which is enough to yield about three gallons of mead, and I started to mix together the recipe. I mixed it really vigorously with a stirring drill attachment, so the strawberries were basically pureed by the end. The honey I used is from Walmart, so this recipe should be accessible for most people. It's just basic honey. I used the Lauvin 71B1122 for its quick and clean fermentation, nice fermentation temperature range, and its notability to do well with berries. I wanted to add my vanilla bean later because I didn't want it to be fermented on and lose any of the nice character that comes with it. After mixing everything together, I took a gravity reading with my hydrometer and found out that we have a starting gravity of 1.044. This is going to land us at about a 5.8-ish percent final ABV. I'm front loading with Fermaid O, which I used about 5 grams, and I'll be adding 3 grams of dimonium phosphate, or DAP, at the 48 hour mark. This is to help protect the yeast as they go through the budding process. DAP can actually harm them, so don't add dimonium phosphate too early. At that 48 hour mark, I did add the dimonium phosphate. This fermentation flew by, like it literally only took about eight days for it to ferment out and clear up. When I saw the yeast start to flocculate at the bottom of the bucket, I went ahead and threw in my two vanilla beans that were sliced open. Alternatively, you can use vanilla extract, I would add a small amount to taste if you do this. The gravity at this point was 1.000, so we had burned through all of the sugars there. These vanilla beans sat for two weeks, so now we're about three weeks into this project and I'm ready to move on with it. We're going to have a bottle carbonated version and a kegged version, so half bottle carbonated, half kegged. For my bottle carbed version, I split the meat in half, so I had 1.5 gallons roughly, and I put it into another container. I added about 40 grams of priming sugar. I had about 1.5 gallons, like I said, and this normally equates out to about 25 or 26 grams per gallon of priming sugar. I also added eight ounces of erythritol, which is a non-fermentable plant-based sugar that is natural. It comes from the earth. It's a great way to back sweeten without it being fermented on. This brought the final gravity up to about 1.008. I did add about one quarter teaspoon of citric acid, which can be subbed out for lemon juice. This was to help bring a little more acidity to this brew. I then made sure everything was mixed up and bottled it. These will take about two to three weeks to bottle carbonate. For the kegged version, I went ahead and moved what I needed into my keg, which was again about 1.5 gallons. This is a 1.6 gallon keg, which is very nice. It stacks. It's a pretty cool looking thing. I'll put a link down in the description. I stabilized it with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite so I can safely back sweeten with honey, which is fermentable. 24 hours later, I added one half pound of orange blossom honey to back sweeten and one quarter teaspoon of citric acid to help balance the acidity level. I was pretty pleased with the taste of it. The gravity reading was about 1.014, so a little sweeter than the bottle carved version. I hooked it up to my CO2 tank and put it at about 30 PSI for three days. Now I'm gonna do these tastings at different times because I'm doing this voiceover right now before the 4th of July. I'm actually taking this keg with me to a 4th of July get together, so I wanna make sure and get a good taste of it before it's gone. So let's hop into the tastings. 
I need a drink. Good thing we have today's sponsor to help us out in our need. Today's video is sponsored by Shaker and Spoon. They are a company who creates subscription-based boxes for cocktail kits that come straight to your home. You can get a wide variety of boxes for your various cocktail drinking desires. Each box comes with the required mixers for 12 drinks at home. All you need to do is buy the spirit required and start mixing. I chose the Fruits of the Fall box and received a box to make three different fall-oriented cocktails. Today I'm making the Wolf of Ware that features Applejack brandy, orange bitters, birch syrup, and an apple slice. I really like how personalized this box felt to what cocktails that I enjoy. This box came with lots of ingredients for the other two recipes and I can't wait to try those. They even include some instructions on how to make the drinks. All of these ingredients are house-made and very high quality. They blend beautifully well to create a very enjoyable cocktail. As someone who doesn't enjoy tracking down a bunch of ingredients for recipes, this box makes it easy for me to make high quality cocktails at home with no stress. You can choose from a variety of subscriptions and cancel at any time. I really enjoyed the simplicity of these recipes and the fact that I had everything I needed to make them. You can use my code MANMADEMEAD to receive $20 off your Shaker and Spoon subscription today. You can also use the link below for the same offer. Thank you to Shaker and Spoon and go check them out. Oh. Back to it. All right, all right. Settle down, settle down. Is that a gavel? I don't know. Um, uh, let's finish this video. I have both of them right here. I have this keg version, which it's been three weeks since I bottle carved this guy. Keg version over here. Uh, I don't know if the keg version is still good. I'm hopeful that it is. We're gonna find out. Let's go ahead and open up the bottle carved first and see if it has truly carbonated. Here we go. I heard a shh. And we have carbonation. Oh yeah, that was perfect. All right. I'm not, not surprised that it bottle carved, but thankful that it did. So bottle carved version. Look at that guy right there. Oh, looking good. We'll say it's not super clear. That is one of the cons of bottle carving is sometimes when you use priming sugar and yeast are still involved, they can muck it up. Um, let's go ahead and get the keg version. Uh-oh, I did not hear a with that guy. But there's still carbonation. And it's still carved. Yes. All right, y'all. This is going to work out perfectly. So... What I did, by the way, uh, um, I think I mentioned it previously in the clip, but I took that keg to a 4th of July party and it was literally almost entirely gone. I got home and I was like, maybe I can get a bottle of it to save for the future. And I literally filled up this bottle to the very top and then tried to do another bottle and that bottle didn't happen. So this is the last of the kegged. All right. Let's go ahead and denote some things. Let me take a picture with my phone because I don't know if the naked eye is gonna be able to, or the naked eye, the camera is gonna be able to see this. Okay, so looking at the my left hand, or the left side of the screen right now, this is the bottle carved version, and you can see it's a little more red, a little more kind of burnt orange. The keg, kegged version is a little more just uh, yellow, less burnt orange. I don't, honestly know why that is. That's a little interesting to me, um, but that's all right. So let's go ahead and start with the bottle carved. Ooh, yeah. I love this combination, by the way. Strawberry vanilla, by far a top few favorite combination of fruits and spices. And that carbonation is refreshing, a nice strawberry note coming through, not really getting a plasticky vibe, and you get a plastic vibe from the strawberry seeds, not getting that here, thankful for that. The vanilla is pretty soft, but it adds softness to this brew, so it's just kind of uh, warming and inviting. It's kind of like a nice little hug between the sweetness and the strawberries, which there is a little sweetness here. Now that sweetness is also very nice, the strawberry character is so prominent 
I think 71B is a super solid yeast to use for this recipe. That's pretty dang good. Super refreshing. It's 100, 100 degrees outside, so this is very crushable for me. Flip to the other side. Here's the kegged version. This, of course, used honey to back sweeten and then force carved. Oh, yeah. The honey there brings out, of course, floral notes, sweetness. It kind of helps retain more of that traditional mead kind of character you want, but it doesn't totally deter from the strawberry. Carbonation, super nice. The vanilla, again, it's like a nice hug between the, the honey and the strawberries. So this is now, because of the sugars we used, these have become two different brews. Erythritol is obviously not the same as honey. I don't think that's a surprising fact for anybody. It does have a different taste. So I get more bright strawberry character from the bottle carved than I do from the keg carved. The keg, keg carved is a little more warm, obviously has more floral value. The strawberry is like a, it's just a, it's a different kind of strawberry. It's kind of like, I don't wanna say candy like strawberry, but it does have a, a more candy-like vibe than the bottle carved. Both of these are very good. And I think if you're looking at making this mead, you can go either way. Here's the bottle carved version. Here's the keg carved version. Obviously, everybody's gonna do this differently. Some people have kegs, some people don't have kegs. My recommendation to you, if you can do it, get a even small, kegging setup because it will change the way you brew. It is it is an investment, but it's an investment. Keyword there. You will see a drastic difference in your brews. Feel free to make the bottle carved. Feel free to make the keg carved version, but I have really enjoyed this and I'm super excited to make this again. I'm actually here in a little bit. I'm going to go out and uh, buy some more frozen strawberries so I can go ahead and start another batch of this because it's still summer. This is the easily one of the most crushable summer brews I've ever made. And I'm gonna make it again and again and again. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, we are always pushing to grow the mead world. And the only way to do that is if you will share your mead you make with your friends or you will share the content that you're consuming with your friends. So if you like this video, feel free to send it to a friend and say, hey, let's make this. So thank you again. I'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.